Hey folks, I hope you're all doing good out there. In fact, I hope you're doing better than good. Or should I say, well, well, no matter what, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Hey, you know, a lot of us, a lot of people, we go through many different things that bring us down, take us down, pull us down. And oftentimes it's hard to find a way up and out of that. But I'm going to have a conversation today with Leslie Solval. She is the author of her memoir called When the Clock Stops. And we're going to go through some traumatic situations that she went through as a young person. You know, starting from the age four or five through her teen years. We talk about friendship in elementary, junior high. We talk about a time when she, as somebody at the age of 12, had inappropriate interactions with her. So she just touches a little bit on this. You can tell in her voice, and if you're watching the video, you can honestly, you can see that the the memories are still there. And I, I think, now this is just my thinking and saying, is that no matter how difficult times have been and we get through it, I think we still, from time to time, relive those difficult times. You know, each one of us experiences things in a different way. Things might be similar, things might resonate with us, but we all experience things in a different way. It could be traumatic for one person, but maybe not so much so for somebody else. So I hope this conversation that you listen to today with Leslie, you know, helps you out in any way. And if it doesn't, if you know somebody that needs to hear someone else talk about their experiences and how they got out of that, you know, that down and out situation, have them listen to this podcast. But before we get started, you know what I always say, if you are a pet owner, please be a responsible pet owner and have your pets spayed or neutered. All right, let's get to it. Well, Here's five is when I started in elementary school, right? And um, mm -hmm. that was the beginning of when I start attending five different elementary schools um, throughout that time. And um, that was hard for me, and the, the reason for that was moving so much. I moved 13 times before I was 13, um, and went five different elementary schools, and um, luckily because of my, my grandma and grandpa, I was able to attend the same middle school um, throughout those three years, and same high school basically, but, um, because, but she she got us a condo that my mom and I were able to stay in in one place in Santa Clara, mm -hmm. um, and so that gave us some stability um, that we not I not had previously, um, and I mean throughout that time was also various boyfriends entering my mom entering and exiting my mom's life in my life, um, being introduced to new people and then not have them in my life anymore, you know? Um, so it was a, a bit chaotic and a bit, um, just confusing. <laughs> Very yeah. confusing. Um, I guess that's probably the nicest way of putting it, right? It was a mm -hmm. confusing time, especially at that age, anywhere between that, you know, four, five, 13, 14, 15. It, it's, it's difficult. Now, of course you did the memoir, so you, you remember back then. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it that you could share with us? How difficult was it going to all these different schools? I'm going to assume that it was really hard to make friends. And at that point in time, friends are really important. So mm -hmm. you know, what was that friendship like during that time of move? Did you have, did you have a stable friend at your elementary school or did that come later in junior high? Yeah, um, so what's interesting is most of the elementary schools I went to were in the same district. Um, a few of them were, were out in like a farm community type of community in California, and um, like two of them. And um, those ones I felt very out of place, and it was a different. I, I stuck, basically, I stuck out like a sore thumb. I'm a very tall white girl, and I stuck out. Um, and um, and they were at a different place academically, so it, those places were hard. But when I was at this, this 
three out of five that were in my same district, um, people were generally the same, and I had, but I had some short-term friends at those different places. But what was funny was when I finally went and got a stable, well, we got finally got a stable home and went to the same middle school. Some of those people were, or a lot of those people from the different elementary schools fed into that same middle school. Okay. Um, so it became a funny thing that I actually knew a lot more people than anyone else knew because, um, because I was like, Oh, I, I went to school with all of you basically. <laughs> and, but I knew them less and then, you know, not best friends, but I just knew of everyone. Um, and it wasn't really until fifth grade that I got a strong best friend, um, that, continued with me throughout high school, middle school and high school. Um, and so, but then that, I think it's in my book, that one didn't exist anymore after college, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, the instability of the friendships and not being able to get anything close and meaningful throughout for many years was really hard. And, but I did, I do feel it kind of helped me learn how to get along with various types of people mm -hmm. um, and be a very dyna dynamic person. Um, so that helped, might have helped me a little bit later in my career, in my life. I would imagine too that it helped you learn to be self-sufficient in a way. Uh, not to say that as a negative saying, well... It, it taught you how to do everything yourself because you could not depend on anybody. But, you know, that's the pi byproduct of that. Yeah. Um, but, I again, I would imagine that, like you said, later on in your life, it it, it allowed you to do and become uh, the person that you are transitioning into still. And I only use the word transitioning because I don't think we ever stop. We yeah. continually evolve. Mm -hmm. um, so... You know, with, with that really strong bond or friendship with the person from fifth grade on, how did having a friend uh, or someone to talk to or lean on help you during those times? Well, I think it was very crucial during the times of, well, when a lot of things happened. I had a traumatic event happen when I was 12. Um, that's in my book. Um, and so she was around for that. And then when um when hormones are changing you're becoming a teenager um that's a big event too and you get emotions you like boys and all that stuff so it was really good to have a best friend to feed uh, for feedback during that time um you know with first boyfriends first <laughs> thing, shh, quiet quiet uh, <laughs> first things so um yeah. if i didn't have that that would have been very damaging really hard i would imagine too that it is at that time uh, more difficult for for girls than boys going through the puberty and going through the teenage years and all, all of that you said so something really traumatic happened at the age of 12 can you give us a little sneak peek into that into your book as as far as what happened you it was uh, an event when i was 12 in the summer when, um, on a camping trip uh, with a family friend who inappropriately interacted mm -hmm. with me um, one evening. So, yeah. 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 And it's a difficult thing to talk about, I think, live than it is to write it down and have people read. So I yeah. understand that. Um, which, again, is a very, very traumatic, very traumatic, and something that I think can last with you, again, forever. You know, just like our, our growth and our path it just goes on, but that, something like that, I would imagine it is always going to be in the back of your mind somewhere. Uh, so well, it, it definitely impacted me for many years um, mm -hmm. into it, into my early to mid twenties. Um, but I think then I did. I went to a lot of therapy in my twenties, um, and so I resolved some past trauma, uh, past traumas, and, and you know feelings I had about things. Okay, that's, I mean, that, that's good. And here again, uh, going to counseling does help, does help people get through these things and to be able to face them and to, uh, if you want to use the word overcome. Again, in your 20s, you know, you, you've had this difficult, I'm going to just say a difficult life through 
your early childhood through your teens and you're into your 20s and by this time you you're out there you're in college um you're making other friends did that traumatic childhood affect you in, in a negative way and then and or a positive way in your 20s and how did that happen oh it affected me in a lot of ways <laughs> Um, mm, let's see. Different things of way uh, the way I was raised and brought up um, caused me to start college when I was 15 and, and start early and be a perfectionist and work really hard in school. Um, and uh, let's see, different things growing up also caused me to get in an inappropriate relationship when I was younger um, with an older man. <laughs> Quiet. Um, and, um, and get married young for when I was 18 um, to my first love, and um, which of course ended in divorce because I, I didn't know what to look for in a man at the time. I, I wasn't really taught that um, and what a healthy relationship was like and how to find that and how to make sure you don't settle for that, uh, settle for less than that. Um, and... Um, you know, you were talking about saying you mentioned being a perfectionist, and one would think that going through the childhood uh, that you went through, you would not pursue being a perfectionist. Uh, that, that's just my thinking. Maybe that, maybe others would pursue trying to make somebody else happy, but not using the word that you use as a perfectionist. Was that something that you instilled in yourself to become perfect, or where did that come from? Um, I think it had to do with my dad not being in my life and around, um, and nothing ever made him come around more or want to be in my life more. And I, and, um, I kind of thought that for some reason I thought that me doing more or accomplishing more would make him want to be in my life more mm -hmm. and make him want to get better and, um, improve his life to be in my life. Um, that was never the case, unfortunately, but um, I had a strong desire and need to be the best I can be in all ways, whether it's school or work or financial success. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like you're saying, it kind of initially started out that you wanted to have the approval of your, of your biological father so he would be in your life, but mm -hmm. you soon realize that that's not the case you're not going to change him but you continue to pursue this perfection in yourself in order to become a better person is that what we can say yeah well actually the other thing that happened when i was 12 which is really good that i had a friend a uh, best friend at the time was my dad my father forgot who i was um he oh. developed dementia um and his mind reverted back to the that of a child and he forgot who I was and called me, called me by my sister's name. And then when I was a week before I turned 16, he ultimately died. Um, and so that, those were big trigger events that caused certain things to happen in my life. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, at that age, yeah, it's again, well, I suppose at any age, but especially at that five, 10, 12, 13, 16, um, very difficult time. Like I said, you have a lot of changes in your body, you have a lot of emotions happening, and then you have uh, something traumatic happen to your father. Difficult times. So, uh, you know, so moving on then, you went to college, you finished college, you now are this successful person who has finished school. You've brought yourself up by the bootstrap. Let, let's talk, I guess, about the um, the positives of what happened in the negative time. So what are some of the things that you changed that were negative and turned it into a positive to become the better person? Is there anything that you could let us know? Sorry. Uh, so the negatives that became, I turned into a positive? Um, yeah. Mm, Let's see. Well, the traumas and, and um, experiences I went through in my past, as well as um, the big changes all the time, um, 
I think I turned that into a positive by making my it made me a more dynamic person and able to um, handle and and experience a lot of different changes and events um, with ease. But um, also the things I experienced before led me to turn into a positive by being involved. Well, ever since I was twelve, really, I was I've been involved in a lot of. Um, volunteer type stuff. Um, okay. It made you uh, more of a compassionate person. It sounds like as well. You're more compassionate. Uh, you're definitely driven. Um, well, I, anybody that writes a memoir is pretty driven. Now you're already saying that you're working on your second and third. So mm -hmm. that is really a driven person. Uh, you know, with, with me saying that, what do you see in your big, bright future? Um, well, a lot of my past history with like mentoring Sudanese refugees and becoming a CASA for foster children um, is also leading me now to becoming a, um, a foster parent. Um, so I'm working on doing that and um, hopefully a mother very soon. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and I kind of took a step back from tech at the end of last year. Um, because I've been a finally able to do that and I've been wanting to do that for a while. And it's been nice to be able to focus on publishing my first book, working on my next ones, um, and enjoying the traveling I've been doing for the last few years and, um, just do the things that make me happy and fulfilled and like my little, all my little hobbies. <laughs> so. You know, that's a big thing that we all need to learn to take time for ourselves and do things that make us happy and that yeah. fulfill us because we only have one life. And I think it's wonderful how you've taken and you've you've taken all the negatives and you were able to work through them. Uh, I'm not going to say that everybody and anybody can work through it and say it's over because, again, a lot of things are going to always be be there and it's a constant working through things but it's wonderful to hear somebody such as yourself that had those difficulties and you've learned to um, overcome and just really to strive to help others as well so again where can people get your your memoir when the clock stops and do you have a specific website mm -hmm. yeah right now it's available on Amazon on in paperback and ebook um, I am trying to figure out who has a uh, professional sound studio to try to make, which uh, you might, but, but I don't know, I think you look close to me, um, um, to make an audiobook version of my book, because that's been a big request um, from many of my friends and people I know. Um, um, and also, I can be directly contacted through Facebook or Instagram uh, for signed author copies. And I have those available as well. Okay. Yeah, because I'll tell you, I, I knew it was on Amazon because you do have all five star. It's five star rating on your memoir. So that's super great. Well, I've gotten incredible feedback and reviews from people I know about my book. And I, I'm very honored and humbled by all the things that people have said about me. Yeah, you know, that's the thing is whether you know somebody or don't know somebody, what you went through is something that a lot of people it can, um, I don't want to say common ground, but they, they can... They can relate. They can relate. Yeah, thank you. Yes, they can relate to, to that. So what you have put down in your memoir is definitely going to be helpful. And what you're doing right now, doing podcasts and interviews and things like that, I think is going to open the, the door and the light to a lot of people to, to try. Mm -hmm. We only have one life and got to make the most of it to make your best life yeah. and I'll, all I want to do with my book was to um, well have have something the, the reason I wrote it was for my future kids to know me and know who I am what I've experienced um, and to learn from those experiences in case I'm not around when they get older um, and um, also to be able to help anyone who might have something to learn from me and in, and if I can inspire them and help them in any way I want to be able to and uh, that's what's been amazing that I have done that so far and uh, that was my goal and 
whether it's a few hundred people or thousands or more, I, that doesn't. I just want to help whoever wants wants to the help. You know, it's funny. It isn't until towards the end how that we we or you we use that word learn. And this has been a learning experience, and hopefully people who read the memoir will understand that anything that you go through, you can look at it as a learning experience, and you can always make that change. Uh, I know sometimes change is difficult because others affect it, but you have the power to make that change. So, oh yeah, oh yeah. A lot yeah. of people don't realize that we have a lot of power in our lives to make change, to make our lives how we want it to, but our brains often make us feel stuck yeah it's you're absolutely right on that so everybody that's watching and listening you know understand that you have that power like leslie said you have that power to make that change change your mindset and understand that you you can do it and there are people out there in the world who do care about you you may not see them right here you may not see them around the corner but there is someone at some point in time who will care so. Oh, there, and there's always someone who's going through the exact same thing you are, someone who is right now or has has gone through. So in this society, especially currently with, with technology, we need to um, understand, get better connections, make better connections with people because so we don't all feel so alone. A human connection is, is needed. And human connection is go see the person. Don't yeah. just send a text message. This is nice being able to do FaceTime, but it's much better if you can actually see the person, uh, if at all possible, if they're close enough. Leslie, I think this has been really good. And again, I'm just, I'm just really glad that you wrote the memoir and that this is going to be able to help, like I said, hundreds, if not thousands of people. And I think somebody such as yourself, you already passed the one, but even if it only helped one person, mm -hmm. that's a win. Exactly. That's, that's my whole goal.